went live. I did a live on my Facebook wall today after my run, but going off that same topic, something that a lot of us are very unaware of is the conditioning that has led to who we are today and what we believe and what we believe we should be or shouldn't be or whatever it is. And along the way, we develop coping mechanisms and a lot of the time it's the coping mechanisms of we need to be doing all these things we need to be doing more we need to be kept busy we need to be checking boxes we need to make sure everything's tidy but a lot of the time it's just because we try to find something that we can control we use a means of getting control over something as a means to feel like we're worthy enough we're good enough we're doing enough we're feeling accomplished because we're doing so and so and something else that can come from that is we start to doubt ourselves in that if I'm not ticking these boxes if I'm not holding myself to these standards if I'm not putting my like if I don't have an end date if I don't have something that's keeping me committed if I'm not in something that has accountability like in in terms of accountability I mean something in terms of like a comp or a team sport or just something that has an end date something that you are committing to publicly in that kind of sense that doesn't have substance to it but just has that end date that just has you know the the external metrics we we tend to not actually experience what there is to experience because there's all these we shoulds, we coulds, we need to hold ourselves to this. Otherwise, we're going to be lazy. We're going to fall to something. And this wasn't even planned, but I'll go into my plan talk in a sec. But I wanted to bring up an experience. And that's something I used to fear is that I'm innately lazy. I'm I am, I am, like what you connect I am to is powerful. And in the live that, not in the live, I actually did on a post because while I was running, something I was listening to was someone talking about identity and identity foreclosure. And it's kind of the same with the way that lockdown happened. Like if our identity was someone that was a gym goer or a power lifter or someone that was so attached to the gym in a way that was like, I'm a comp prepper, I can only I can only train at the gym where I need to do it this way, or I'm gonna lose myself, blah, blah, blah. And we didn't have any other way to have that coping mechanism. We would lose ourselves because that was our identity. And now we lost that identity. So then we try to find a coping mechanism somewhere else, which for a lot of people, that coping mechanism was food, that coping mechanism was alcohol. It was some type of thing. And that's exactly why a lot of relationships also went down the gutter in lockdown because it had to bring a lot of stuff to the surface that usually is avoided. Anyway, because of that coping mechanism, not coping mechanism, because of that story I told myself with I'm always lazy, I shallowly committed myself to many things, but it was all with good intention. Like I loved it. I loved every moment of it until I didn't but then I clung to it because that was all I knew. That was the shell I had and I didn't have any other purpose. And I spoke about this in so many of my podcasts, so I'm not going to go into big detail, but something I never spoke about was that lazy part to its essence that I want to bring up now. And that's because of that, I had to do shit because I didn't believe that I could carry through. I didn't believe that I could follow through. I didn't believe that I could stick to things. I was always a quitter. If I didn't keep myself busy, if I didn't keep myself checking boxes, then I'm just going to fall back to my laziness without realizing I don't need to be 100% all the time. And there's other things in life that actually fill my cup outside of exercise, outside of fitness. And now it's like if I was to train five days a week, if I was to train six days a week, it would feel like a burden. It would feel like a chore. It's like, yeah, I could do more. But do I really want to live in the gym? No, I don't. There is so much more to life than that. And that's just one example, but the whole thing is <sighs> we hold ourselves 
to this unrealistic bullshit that's on social media all the time. And because social media is everywhere that we look, it's it's in our face. And this is exactly what I spoke about in my live. But why do we feel like we need to be there? Why do we feel like not enough weight loss, not enough progress? Like what is progress to you? How many times have you tried to do things really fast only to end up nowhere? But hey, there's people losing weight in this many days and this many weeks. But have you seen them a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? Do you know what's going on in their head? Do you know all the actual ins and outs? Probably no. And until you realize, I spoke about this in my last reel on Instagram as well, but if you realize that every single time you feel like you should be doing things so much quicker and like a 12-week thing or even a four-month thing because four months is really not even enough. And then you say, I'm not making progress fast enough. I'm not seeing results fast enough. Oh, I'm not making any progress. Oh, why am I struggling? Oh, it's a really bad week. Oh, it's not the right time right now. And you're not willing to just do the minimal effective dose. And you want to start again when things are right. And then you end up back at square one. And then it's just like, if you throw in the towel now, you could have been so much further if you just kept going and doing the smallest things there and then, because that's life. Life is messy. Life happens in the crazy middle. You can't always be doing all the things. You can be, but this is now what I planned out. You can be successful by everyone else's standards. You can be a super achiever and have all of that, but you can but you can easily never have that actual experience for yourself because those standards are everyone else's. You're doing all the things for everyone else. You're trying to make everyone else happy, show them that you're there for them, showing them that, hey, I'm living this fancy life. Hey, I'm so successful. Hey, I'm loving life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a photo, blah, blah, blah. Hey, look at my progress. Hey, look, I'm crushing it. You can be all those successful things by everyone else's standards, but not experience it for yourself. Because you are measuring progress wrong. Is it based off your past and what you were trying to avoid as pain, as coping mechanisms to deal with that because that was comfort then, because that was survival, that was what made you belong, that was safety, and now you have this new like facade to measure ourselves against some ideal Versus just measuring yourself against where you started and how much you've come, like how far you've come so far and the progress you've already made and who you want to be. Because when we allow ourselves to see how far we've come and the shit we've achieved, you can do pretty damn great things, but you don't need, like, what served us once, it doesn't mean it, we need to keep doing it. Like, something that served us before may not be serving us and our future self. It may have been something that we needed once before, and that's okay. Maybe something we need right now is what we need to keep doing, and that's okay, but it's not something we need to keep doing forever. And something before as well, because the whole idea is to make us be our best self and measure ourselves against our own standards. Because health and fitness are your life. They are everything. Without health and fitness, you have nothing. COVID is proof of that. I only had it for like two days, three days. It didn't impact me much at all to the point where I didn't even think I had it. So I still went to the gym and I'm like, yeah, this is a really bad session. Yep, I think I have it. <laughs> like it, when you live a healthy life, everything affects you less. I was listening to a podcast. I can't remember which one it was, but it was even talking about how your health and fitness impact your disease risk in terms of cancer. Unless, of course, you have the genetics, which is kind of a, I'm not even going to talk about it because that's, it's a sad thing, but your health and fitness are your wealth. They allow you to live longer. They allow you to live fuller. They allow you to show up better, to have energy. Like, I always get caught in endless, boundless, bouncing, energizer, bunny, whatever. Like, muscle gives you energy. Just living a healthy life gives you energy. 
if you're not draining it and taking it to the extremes where you think that you always have to be beating yourself up all the time. This served me once. This got me to here. I need to keep doing it or I won't feel worthy without it. I won't feel like I'm doing enough without it. Like that shit, that's not serving your future self. Because having these unrealistic, unreachable goals and things we compare ourselves to are like running running to the horizon. We never reach the horizon. It's always moving. Because newsflash, the earth isn't flat. <laughs> but this is why you need to be a master of your own progress. Measure yourself against yourself and enjoy the process. Like, stop even thinking about how much progress you made. Start thinking about how much life experience you're making because you will get there. Because obsessing over it isn't fun. Like, this is why I keep saying I'm trying to, I'm trying to show that it is possible and it's amazing on the other side because, like, do I look like I neglect my body? Like, I don't neglect my body. I want the best for my body. I care about what I look like. I care about how I feel. But I could look amazing and ha think I look freaking disgusting because body image is not about your body. It's about this. Because I looked amazing many times before and I never liked what I looked like. Like, when I first started out, I would never put photos out that weren't black and white. And I missed out on so much because of the lack of confidence that I had and the lack of me putting myself out there. And it's taken me a while, many years actually, many freaking several years to get to where I am now. And it's freedom because I don't, like, yeah, I can easily compare about why am I not making progress fast enough, but I don't even think about that anymore. I just think about the day that's the day that I'm living and what I can do today to be better. And it's not even just being better physically. It's everything. Like my, I don't even talk about it enough, but literally my obsession, the thing that I speak about, think about, stress about, if that's what I want to use as a word the most, is my business. You guys, my coaching, my education. It's not my fitness. and my training like that's just there my nutrition it's just there and it's a non-negotiable for me because it allows me to show up in areas that matter the most to me which is my coaching it's my impact it's my influence it's how i can serve you it's how i can be better it's how i can put information out there that resonates it's how i can get information out there that makes a difference it's how I can serve you. It's how I can make you girls better. It's how I can grow myself and develop myself and have as many conversations with as many women as I can to understand you guys, to understand the human psyche, the human condition, because there are so many complexities to it. And the more that I can be better, the more that I can show up better. And that's the same with you girls in areas of your life, in your relationships. Because how many people find themselves in divorces, find themselves in relationships that don't serve them? How many people feel like they aren't worthy without that something? End date, competition, relationship, whatever it is. Because when you look at the end of the day, you don't actually look at the day itself but your reaction to it, your experience in that day. Are you going to beat yourself up because of what you didn't do, what you should have, couldn't have done? Measure yourself against some stupid ideal? Or are you going to see it as an experience and value your experiences more so that the next day can be just as fulfilling? Because life is about living it. And it's not always easy. And there are shit days, there are hard days, there are days where you just can't wait to hit your pillow, there are days you can't wait until the sun just comes up the next day, there are days that you struggle and that is okay. You're a bloody human. People don't show that shit on social media. Would you? Would you show your worst day? Would you show your biggest struggles? Would you want to 
put it out there to the world? I don't think so. And I don't think anyone else would be doing it either. Okay? Love you all. I put that horse.